This video will introduce the new Headshot Morph 1000 Plus Pack, a powerful new addition to Reillusion's Character Creator 3. Whilst the morphs are designed for use with the Headshot application for photo modeling, they can also be used independently and in tandem with the existing morphs which are already in Character Creator. So, what's so special about these new morphs? First of all, we believe that this is the most comprehensive human head morphing approach available for any 3D software. With well over a thousand individual sliders, this is a huge data set, providing a huge range of modeling possibilities, from the most general adjustments to fine details, which means that artists can do more and work faster with less requirement for vertex editing when polishing character faces and heads. If you're an existing user of Character Creator, you will already be familiar with morph modeling using the available stock morphs and any other morph packs which you've installed, as well as custom morphs which you may have created yourself. So, what are the benefits of this new morph set? As well as being a vast range of sliders, the morphs have been built to operate as directly as possible on the mesh, where, for example, if a morph addresses a basic transform such as height, width or depth of a feature, it aims to only address that particular mesh transformation, with minimal effect on surrounding features, whilst maintaining good mesh interpolation around the affected area. This means that headshot morphs are more objective and controllable, important not just for aligning models to photos, but for precise modeling more generally. Add to that, used properly, headshot morphs produce cleaner, more balanced mesh, which is better for animation. Perhaps one of the biggest issues with morph modeling, especially if you have a lot of morphs, is navigation, being able to find a particular morph quickly within a large number of sliders. To facilitate this, headshot morphs are ordered logically, not only in terms of their folder structure, but also in terms of the sliders themselves. Every morph also has an icon for quick reference, indicating not only the general location and transform of the morph, but also whether its primary effect is to the front or side visual plane. The different folders are ordered in a top-down approach, starting with general head, skull and face morphs, then moving down through the features, from forehead to brow, eye, ear, cheek, nose, mouth, chin, then jaw, until finally reaching the neck. Each folder is further broken down depending on the part or the feature, including general, which contains a range of the most obvious general sliders such as scale, height, width and depth, with additional detail folders providing further granularity on more general parts such as the face, forehead and brow, as well as type folders for the face, ears and nose to assist with general modeling. The primary features of eyes, ears, nose and mouth contain more specific detail folders to address particular parts of features such as the eyelashes, the ear edges, or the mouth corners. I said at the start of this video that headshot morphs are designed for use with the headshot application, which creates heads automatically from photos, which can then be fine-tuned using the morphs. Since headshot models are originally generated from front-face photos, the order of headshot morphs within each folder follows a simple rule, which will make it much easier for users to navigate them whether using headshot or not. Basically, morphs which primarily affect the frontal view are at the top of each folder, whereas morphs affecting the side, those primarily affecting depth, are lower on the list towards the bottom. So, for example, if you want to work on the nose tip to create a particular curve in the profile view, you already know that the morphs for that area are towards the bottom of the nose tip folder. And the same goes when working on all of the other features. And whilst this approach of ordering morphs is particularly useful for headshots photo modeling, where you start on the frontal view before moving to the side, it also means that when using the morphs more generally, you already have an idea of the general location of a particular morph before you go into a folder. And of course, once familiar with the morph names, you can also use the search bar at the top of each folder to find a particular morph more quickly. In addition to the main headshot folder, you'll also notice additional headshot folders in the teeth and eye sections of the actor hierarchy. The teeth folder contains a huge set of morphs for transforming the teeth, 
both generally and individually. And the eye folder contains specific morphs, primarily for rotating the eyeballs, but also for changing iris and pupil scale at the mesh level. Another important feature of headshot morphs is that they're designed to work over specific ranges. So whilst you can, if you want, type in extreme values, the default slider settings will encourage artists to stay within more natural extents when working on realistic heads and faces. This is also important for minimizing mesh distortion, which can cause problems later in animation. That said, if you need to go further than the existing range on a particular morph, you can simply type in the higher value, or bake the current morphs and simply apply the slider again. Being aware that for best facial animation properties, it's important to ensure that the mesh itself doesn't become too distorted or imbalanced. To finish off, I'll demonstrate the headshot morphs in action. First, using them to correct the headshot generated model, and then a more freeform approach. Headshot produces better or worse models depending on the quality of the original face photo used, whether it's evenly lit, taken face on or at an angle, basically whether the software can clearly read the features. And it does a great job, but with human modeling, it's all about detail and there can be misalignments between the photo and the model, which is where the morphs come in. So let's take this example where the eyelid here is clearly not correctly aligned. I can see this using Headshot's photo alignment tool. To fix this, I simply use the appropriate morphs, then reproject. And the same approach can be applied to any feature misalignment. Now, Headshot's automatic calculation is based purely on the front face photo. And whilst it does generate depth, so each model does have an individual profile, you may want to fine tune this, and obviously you can use the morphs to create virtually any profile you wish. But you can also make more accurate models by cross-referencing the original model with the side face view. And if you have precise camera information, you can emulate that within Headshot and Character Creator. But even here, with some approximate alignment and some additional imagery from the side face brought into the head texture from Photoshop, you can see just how a likeness can be improved. And if a perfect likeness isn't required, or if you don't have a side face photo, the headshot morphs can be used more freely to create virtually any features you wish, using a basic selection of the morphs via direct manipulation using headshot's sculpt morph approach, or more comprehensively via the sliders. The Headshot Morph 1000 Plus approach is a human head modeling system designed for photo modeling using the Headshot application. But it's more than that. You can use it as a standalone modeling approach, and you can also use the morphs alongside any existing morphs you have within Character Creator. Thanks for watching.